got beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, greens, the raw, raw. Well, happy Turkey Day, wise guys and gals, and welcome to a special Gobble Gobble edition of the Wise Eats Podcast. I'm your host, former fat guy and turkey Thanksgiving dinner aficionado, Wes Wise, and we've got another fun-filled holiday edition of the show for you today. We're going to be going over some fun facts about Thanksgiving. We're also going to share some tips for you to stay on track with your health and fitness goals over the holiday. So let's get right into it. How can you not like Thanksgiving? It's my favorite holiday. Sit around, eat your ass off, puke, eat again, watch football, fall asleep. It's fucking beautiful. About 96% of Americans are going to celebrate Thanksgiving this year and spend $552 million on turkey. So I love Thanksgiving. It's uh, not always been one of my favorite holidays. Obviously, as a kid, I loved Christmas was my favorite. And that's actually the number one holiday in America, of course. Thanksgiving is ranked number two, followed by Halloween at number three. Not shocking there, but I love the holiday because it's just a, it's a fun time. It's a special time to celebrate with family and friends, enjoy some awesome food, and be thankful for all the different things that we have in our lives because, you know, there's a lot of people that are, are not so fortunate. So this is a time to be thankful for all the different things that we have in our lives. I'm, I'm grateful every day for all the, all the wonderful things in my life. So that's what Thanksgiving is all about to me and What better way to celebrate the day than to dive into a little bit of history and some fun facts about the time. So that's what we're going to do right now. On Thanksgiving, gentlemen, it's important to remember that there are places, other places, of course, in this world that do not have the things that we have and take for granted. The very first Thanksgiving was actually celebrated in 1621, and it was spread out over three days. It wasn't just one day. And actually, it's not known whether or not turkey was actually served. They definitely had venison and duck and a whole bunch of other stuff. They didn't have pumpkin pie. They didn't have cranberry sauce. And uh, obviously, it's a whole different story today. I think about 88% of Americans eat turkey on Thanksgiving. What are you doing? Okay, have a good day. If we rank the different dishes in order of popularity, it goes down like this. Turkey is number one with 39%. Stuffing is number two with 23%. Pumpkin pie comes in third place at 12%. And actually, it's estimated that 50 million pumpkin pies are going to be eaten on Thanksgiving. And which is kind of funny because most Americans prefer apple pie over pumpkin pie. But The Rock's got a special type of pie that is better than shepherd's apple, better than pumpkin. Mashed potatoes comes in at fourth place with 9%. Sweet potatoes, 6%, and lastly, cranberry sauce with 3%. So those are the most popular Thanksgiving dishes. Thanksgiving wasn't made into a national holiday until 1863 when Abraham Lincoln declared it a national holiday. Up until that point, each year the president had to re-declare Thanksgiving a holiday. That started with George Washington. And actually, Thomas Jefferson was not too fond of the idea. He refused to call Thanksgiving a holiday. He believed in the separation of church and state. And since Thanksgiving was based around uh, prayer and reflection, he thought it would violate the First Amendment to make it a national holiday. And actually, in uh, 1939, Franklin Roosevelt tried to change the date of Thanksgiving. So that messed a whole bunch of stuff up. He did it to try to stimulate the economy with the shopping days. But it didn't work, it was a disaster, and they ended up going back to the original date, obviously. Also, our neighbors to the north, Canada, they also celebrate Thanksgiving, but for a much different reason. And if you're interested in why, go to wise-eats.com slash episode 17. I'll have a whole explanation of why that happened, but Canada celebrates Thanksgiving, so shout out to them. You know, I love my turkey just as much as the next guy or gal. But I'm also an animal lover, so this fact was especially interesting to me. The White House actually pardons a turkey every Thanksgiving. And it's not really known exactly where this tradition started, but George H.W. Bush formalized the, the tradition in 1989. Unfortunately, 
That one turkey is just a drop in the bucket because about 46 million turkeys are going to be cooked this Thanksgiving and then another 22 million on Christmas. So that's a lot of turkeys that won't be gobbling anymore this year. And speaking of gobbling, the sound that a turkey makes, the gobble, is actually only for male turkeys. Female turkeys actually cackle instead. Come on, talk to me. You know, one of my favorite things about Thanksgiving, other than eating all the delicious food, is watching football. And the first pro football game took place in 1876, and the first NFL games were played on 1920. Um, And there's only two teams that play on Thanksgiving every single year, the Dallas Cowboys and my own Detroit Lions. I know we are the bottom of the barrel when it comes to the NFL teams, but we're going to have a resurgence some point in the the near future, I hope. But the tradition for the Lions began back in 1934. They've played on Thanksgiving every year since then, except for when the team was called away to serve during World War II. So at least the Lions got something going on. They got at least one streak going. It's not wins, but... We're getting ready to watch the Bears annihilate the Detroit Lions, but first... It's a good time to reflect on our glorious heritage. You know, one of the best things about Thanksgiving is that Christmas is right around the corner. And I have a confession to make. I love Christmas music. I love Christmas music. I never thought I would, but it's always so fun and upbeat and energetic and romantic. And there's just really not a lot to not love about it. And I I never used to like it. I always thought it was annoying. I met my wife, and she just listened to Christmas music. She could listen to it all day, and I'm like, ugh. But I don't know. One day, it just a flip switched, and it just grew on me. So now, the day after Halloween every year, a radio channel starts playing Christmas music exclusively through the holiday. And when we turn it, we get in the car, and we turn that radio station on, I'm never mad. You know, so Christmas music is kind of cool. And one of the very most famous Christmas songs, Jingle Bells, was originally written as a Thanksgiving song called One Horse Open Sleigh. It was released for Thanksgiving, but obviously it grew in popularity around Christmas time, and they ended up changing the name, and the rest is history. Now let's get into a Thanksgiving edition of the Fat Guy Files. We're going back in time 10 years to Thanksgiving of 2009, and what an epically bad week this was. I mean, this is incredible. This is the actual handwritten journal entry from back in 2009. So if you want to check that out, it's available at wise-eats.com slash episode 17. At this time, I was 70 pounds into my 90-pound weight loss. And obviously, I was feeling confident. And I was I had this health and fitness thing under control. I was losing weight and just crushing it. And now it was a week to just go crazy and do whatever I wanted. And that's exactly what I did. On Monday, for breakfast, protein, banana, Cheerios, and yogurt. Protein bar, ham, cereal, chicken Alfredo for dinner, and then mixed nuts and apple pie for dessert. So got the Thanksgiving festivities started off right away with the apple pie. Tuesday, Fruit Loops, Total Cereal, Mexican food, more chicken Alfredo, and a Smart Ones dessert. I remember when I was losing my weight, Smart Ones desserts were one of my go-tos for a a sweet dessert that didn't hit you too hard calorically. Look at the ingredient list on those today and forget about it. Won't even touch that. Wednesday, biggest drinking night of the year. So I definitely drank that day. For breakfast was total cereal, lemon chicken, more chicken Alfredo, McDonald's, crab rangoons, and then of course the Thanksgiving pre-drinking and ice cream. Thanksgiving Day, here we go. Breakfast was chicken Alfredo. And geez, that's that's what I looked like back then was just a, a bowl of creamy white chicken Alfredo. Uh, I didn't even write down what I ate for Thanksgiving. Just called it Thanksgiving dinner number one, 4,000 calories. Thanksgiving dinner number two, 2,000 calories. Day after Thanksgiving, this is where it gets good. Breakfast, McDonald's. Lunch, more chicken Alfredo. Dinner, Chicago-style pizza, chips, alcohol. Saturday for breakfast, I had double cheeseburger, pumpkin cheesecake for breakfast, man. Lunch was cake, ice cream, Angus burger. What? Dinner, Taco Bell, appetizers, and more drinks. Of course, I was on a five-day alcohol binge. Finally rounded it off with Sunday cereal for breakfast, turkey sandwich, leftover turkey. There we go. 
Uh, lunch was chocolates. Dinner was egg rolls and crab rangoons, so obviously more Chinese food. And to top it all off, no baked cheesecake and apple pie. <laughs> You okay, Ted? Hey, 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 he's just having a heart attack. The average American consumes about 3,000 to 4,500 calories at their Thanksgiving dinner, and I just blew this out of the water. Thanksgiving Day was 6,600 calories. The day after was 6,000. Heck, the day before Thanksgiving was 7,000 calories. So I averaged per day 5,100 for the week and 158 grams of fat. And that's the fat guy files for Thanksgiving. What a crazy bad week that was. And how do you go from living like that? You know, this is not an exaggeration. This is exactly what I had 10 years ago on Thanksgiving. How do you go from that to today where I hardly eat any of this stuff that was on here? Um, exercising five, you know, I'm exercising every single day. I'm known as the guy that won't touch a piece of candy or won't eat junk food. I mean, I will here and there, but. You know, I'm just known as that guy. Like, so how do you go from one extreme to the other? And I think, so this was 2009. I bet you in 2010, instead of going for a seven day bender, I'd go for a six day. And then in 2011, I'd go for a five day and then a four day. And it was just slowly progressing over time to where just slowly in implementing healthy habits into my life and finally just getting to where I am today, which is not perfect, obviously, but I'm. 10 times better than I was 10 years ago and I'm getting better tomorrow and the next day and next year and on and on it goes. Oh, and a slam dunk through the table. Now that I've illustrated exactly what not to do over Thanksgiving with the fat guy files, let's dive into some tips to help you stay on track with your health and fitness goals over the holiday. I can guarantee you 100% that every single one of these tips is something that I'll be doing this holiday, so hopefully you get some kind of value out of them. Number one is to go for walks. Walking is my second favorite form of exercise next to weightlifting, and I do it every single day. Before my first meal every day, I'm getting anywhere from like two to 5,000 steps, so I'm getting that fasted walk in, and then all throughout the day, but especially for Thanksgiving, I'm definitely going to be walking after dinner, and that's a cool way to incorporate you know, your friends and family, whoever you're hanging and spending the day with. Get them to go for a walk with you. It's a great way to connect, burn some calories, uh, boost your digestion, and uh, there's a whole host of benefits for the walking, so I highly recommend that. Number two is lift some weights. <clears throat> Lifting weights gives your body something to do with those extra calories instead of just storing them as excess body fat. So especially the day before is a good time to get a good weight training session. Heck, I might even try to lift on Thanksgiving if I got enough time, but we'll see. Number three is to get good sleep the night before Thanksgiving. That can help reduce cravings and boost, uh, keep your metabolism firing on all cylinders. And you, I hope you got your great Thanksgiving video. What a great family this is. Number four is to reduce stress. Hopefully holidays are a relaxing time, a fun time, but if it is a stressful time for you, I totally understand. So when you get up on Thanksgiving, set your intentions for the day. Do some journaling, do some deep breathing, some meditation, write out some goals for the day. Really get your mind focus. Don't get up and get on the phone or get on the computer or anything like that. You know, do some reading or something. Really just kind of clear your mind. Because we prepare for Thanksgiving. Your family goes, you want some breakfast? No, 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 no. I'm way, I'm way, I'm way, I'm way. Number five is don't skip breakfast because starving yourself can lead to binging at uh, dinner time. So for me, I'm definitely going to have some kind of salad for breakfast. You know, it's like my life. Um, some lean greens, some probably some scrambled eggs, something like that. Get some lean protein, some good vegetables, and probably not nothing high fat. I want to avoid fat and really carbs because I know I'm going to be having tons of that at dinner time. So something lean and green for breakfast. Tip number six is bring a healthy dish to pass. My wife and I, she is making a green bean dish. So it'll be just plain green beans. Oh, geez, I'm not sure what all she puts on it, but like sea salt and uh, some crushed almonds, and it's really good. I'm going to be making the Bastard Biker banana bread to share. That's actually the recipe of the week. You can check that out at wise-eats.com slash banana bread. I borrowed that from the Civilized Caveman. It's an awesome recipe. It's made with almond butter, eggs, coconut flour, 
a bunch of other stuff, and it is, it, it'll knock your socks off. So good every time I make it. My wife loves it. All my friends and family that have had it love it. It's a great recipe. So bring a healthy dish to pass, and you, you'll you not only impress your friends and family, but you'll be helping them make wise choices, and you'll guarantee that you have something healthy there to choose from if you decide to. There it is, a healthy dessert that's going to leave you guilt-free and feeling great. Next time you're in the kitchen, make a wise decision. Number seven is try to pick proteins over fats. So when you're having your Thanksgiving dinner, eat more of the turkey and more of the vegetables and try to stay away as much as you can from the gravies, the casseroles, and the snacks and desserts. And actually try not to, once you've had your meal or, you know, meals and seconds, whatever, try not to snack after that. If you're actually going to eat, get a plate. Put some food on the plate. Go sit down. Socialize. Don't just stand around the food tables and snack. And you can, (laughs) I know, you can get out of control real quick doing that. That kind of steals away from tip number eight, which is to eat slowly and thoughtfully. You know, Thanksgiving dinner isn't just about the food itself. It's about connecting with others around you. So enjoy your food. Chew slowly. And like I said, talk to your friends and family. Connect with them. And as much as you can to try to avoid the seconds and third helpings, but hey, I know it's easier said than done. And actually a statistic is that eight in 10 Americans actually prefer leftovers more than the Thanksgiving meal itself. You gotta remember to chew those pork chops, buddy. (laughs) Relax, okay, it's a holiday. Tip number nine is to stay hydrated. And this applies in Thanksgiving all year round, 365 days a year, stay hydrated. It's one of the best tactics you can do for overeating. And I drink water with every single meal to increase my feeling of fullness. A lot of times when I'm ready to overeat, I'll stop myself and I'll slam some water down or have some hot tea or something. And almost nine times out of ten, I don't feel hungry again after that. Uh, I have an idea. Why don't we all go around the table and share something that we're thankful for? Staying hydrated leads us right into tip number ten, which is to avoid liquid calories. So avoid alcohol, eggnog, what else, soda. Stick with water, coffee, and tea. Alcohol used to be a staple of my holidays for me. It was just a time to just eat whatever I wanted and drink constantly. And I know I'm not alone. A survey of Americans found that 63% of Americans plan to drink wine with their Thanksgiving dinner. Also 19% plan to drink beer. And 10% plan to have mixed drinks. So if you're planning on boozing it up for Thanksgiving, by all means, enjoy and have a great time. But just know that it's going to make you more, much more likely to retain your calories as body fat. So just keep that in mind. We'll eat our asses and get all f***ed up on whiskey and pot and margaritas. <laughs> then we'll skin a pig and toss it around and tackle each other. One last tip that I'll throw in as a bonus is to just enjoy your holiday. Don't get too worked up about your fitness goals or gaining some weight. Enjoy the food. Just enjoy the time. It's a great day. You know, I used to obsess over every every little thing. Oh, you know, and I'd stress out about it. Like, oh, I have to eat this meal and whatever. I don't care anymore. Uh, exercise is a, is a normal part of my life. I know that one meal is not going to throw me off the rails for, for days on end like it used to anymore. So now I go in knowing that I'm going to crush this delicious food. All the amazing things that my family makes at Thanksgiving, I'm going to get in there and just enjoy it, enjoy the time, and then get right back to it the next day, right back on track. Yeah, I'm going to get right back on track that next, you know, the next hour. Be out there walking, be drinking my water, drinking my coffee, get right back to wise choices. So that's going to do it for the Thanksgiving episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. You can access the full article, including the show notes, pictures, and more over at wise-eats.com slash episode 17. I also want to shout out the following announcement YouTube show. It's in season seven. It's been an awesome season. And the finale drops this Saturday, November 30th, in an episode called Tombstoned. It's a parody of the Tombstone movie starring Kurt Russell. And it actually features yours truly as one of the cast members. So enjoy that. It'll be at tfashow.com, that episode, along with all the other ones. Oh, Johnny Ringo, I forgot you were there. You may go now.
Also, on the next episode, I'll be conducting my first ever podcast interview with none other than my wife, Giovanina. She has a pretty incredible story, has lost 39 pounds over the last year. So we're going to get to know her a little bit, find out exactly how she did it. And that's going to be an awesome episode. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, have a wonderful Thanksgiving and be good to yourself, be good to others, and make wise choices. Now let's get into a special thing. So, ter- Thanksgiving, and that's a tradition that started back in... Jingle bells, Batman smells, Robin laid an egg. The Batmobile lost its wheel and Joker got away. Hey! All right, all right, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. roto Rooter reports that Black Friday is the busiest day of the year for plumbers. Tip number six is... To, is and that's a, tr- a tradition that... T- I'm lifting weights five to seven days a week. Or seven, not seven. Can't see my muscles in this sweater.